fight against racism. We should fight against things that don't bring people together. Um, any separation uh, that's not based in logic and begets violence is not good. That has all happened in 2020. And yet still, there are people, and I will use myself as an example, who are fighting to walk through the middle of the chasm and try to invite people into it. Because people like me, uh, and there are many, many others out there, don't necessarily believe that, that the two extremes are the only thing that exists. We absolutely fundamentally believe that most people live in the middle of the, the so-called bell curve. And if you live in the middle there and you, you're wondering where to go, drop your sword, man. You know, st- stop, stop slaying other people. Stop, stop lashing out. Start to invite people in. Don't get into the power struggles. Be at peace. Invite people into your peace. And teach that to your children. Please, please, for the, for the love of all that is human and for the future of humanity, invite people into your peace. If you've got it, shout it from the rooftops. But don't beat people over the head with it because a lot of folks are just simply not in that spot right now. And we don't need to, you know, berate them or judge them for not being where we are. We need to mean where they are. And if they're angry and they're destructive and they want to, you know, have beef with whatever they have beef with, our job as the peacemakers, as the peacekeepers, is to go to them and invite them in to see what's possible in the middle of the chasm. It's not so dark. It's not so deep. It's definitely not irrecoverable. And I I think that there's great, great positive opportunity to come out of this. We don't just simply shrug it off and say, positive vibes only. That's that's not what we do. Uh, we want to acknowledge the hurt and the possibility for redemption. So, you know, this is just my way of uh, saying all is not lost. Let's, let's not give over to the extreme language of 2020 sucks entirely and altogether top to bottom. That's not true. It's fundamentally not true. And I ticked off several examples of why that's not true. Um, weddings, births, recovery, resilience, uh, doubling down of, of commitments to serve others ahead of self. Those are all great things that have come out of this. So if you're watching this or you're listening, I invite you to notice the areas in your life where you have happiness, where you have peace. And while you grieve the losses and you strategize how to navigate the the scary stuff please also anchor yourself into the benefits that have come into your life through the course of this otherwise ugly year and don't give over to the extreme language that it's horrible and that it's terrible and that everything sucks because it doesn't so if i may be so bold i would invite you to consider that 2020 isn't actually all bad There are bad things, but there's always bad things in every year. And this year, through the bad things, we see opportunities to become great, but we also want to acknowledge the positive things that have happened in this year that would have happened in any other year and not discount them. Hope you find this informational. If you want to reach out to me or any of us, uh, info at zephyrwellness.org. We also have a couple of podcasts uh, of which I'm a part. Naga Notes and Walk the Talk America. Walk the Talk America podcast is called Guns and Mental Health. You can go info at WTTA.org or info at NagaNotes.com. Love to hear your feedback. And um, please move forward loving each other. I love what I do. I love bringing hope to humanity. And um, I I really hope that this reaches you too. Share it with somebody else. Uh, This stuff doesn't do any good locked up in my head. So uh, please spread the, spread the message. 2020 has not entirely sucked. Thanks, as always, for listening. I'm Jake. Enjoy your day. 